You know, this is starting to feel real familiar. Welcome back. Having covered House of the Dead 1 and 2, I figured we'd look at 3 and 4 as something of a double bill. I've put these together because, honestly, both releases are kind of bare bones. Where House of the Dead 2 was absolutely packed with extra features, all you really get here is an arcade mode and an unlockable behind-the-scenes documentary. Hell, even the main menus are more or less a copy-paste job. Ooh, a different colour and font. Don't push your boat out on my account. There's also a poor attempt at linking their stories. House of the Dead 3 takes place in the far-flung future of 2019, because, you know, that can't possibly age badly. While 4 takes place in 2003. Yeah, House of the Dead 4 takes place first, and actually ends with a line saying the story continues in House of the Dead 3. Spoiler alert, it fucking doesn't. They maybe share some themes, sure, at a stretch, but 3 certainly doesn't resolve a single loose thread from 4. I think it really was just a lazy attempt to get people to pump more coins into the older game. 3 flashes back to Curian, the villain from the first game, and shows us he created these monsters while trying to cure his terminally ill son. You know, as if we're supposed to sympathise with or try to understand this maniac. Meanwhile, 4 puts a spotlight on Goldman from the second game and lets him expose it about overpopulation and humans breaking the natural order again, because apparently he somehow survived this. Weirdly enough, even the protagonists match up. 3 features G again alongside Rogan's daughter, with 4 bringing James from the second game back. There's a lot of callbacks, including straight-up duplication. Making efforts to explain past villains' motives and revisiting locations like this just makes me feel uncomfortable. I can't decide if this is a lazy cash grab to pull on nostalgia, a weirdly misplaced attempt at fan service, or the result of some insecurities about their previous work. The gameplay makes me lean towards insecurities. Each title replaces the pistols we had before with new weapons. Three sports a shotgun while four features an Uzi. Admittedly, they do a lot to breathe some new life into the series, and do change the overall gameplay feel. The shotgun's big, powerful, hits multiple enemies, but is relatively imprecise. The game feels like much more of a power fantasy as a result. The trade-off is less skills required. I felt the first two games really rewarded me for targeting specific body parts and having better aim. Here, I just need to be waving my gun somewhere in a zombie's general direction to blow them in two. The Uzi, meanwhile, allows you to hold down the trigger and just spray bullets across the screen. You've got way more enemies on screen at any one time, and you're constantly given ratings for things like headshots. This is much faster paced, with a concentration on racking up combos like some kind of arcade- Oh. Oh shit. Even the reload seems much faster here, so you can keep the pressure on. I felt less like I was using a gun, and more like I had a hose of death. You're also packing grenades that can wipe out scores of the undead in one go. Sadly, every time I saw a group and went to toss one, it turned out I wasn't supposed to engage them, and the screen would spin away, causing me to waste my limited supply. Even if one of the zombies do grab you, you're given an opportunity to shake them off, or you'll be knocked to the ground with a chance to save yourself. A lone zombie's trivialized to the point it's no longer a threat. Hey, I think I've said that before. Both games also have a simplified approach to the multiple paths the original games featured. In 3, you can choose which order you want to play the stages in. Whether you play a stage first, second, or third makes minor changes to its difficulty, enemies, and path through it. 4, meanwhile, just straight up asks you if you want to go left or right at predetermined points. While it's true you can still unlock the odd shortcut here and there, this doesn't feel as organic as before. There aren't as many permutations. I don't feel rewarded or surprised by this system, and ultimately it fails to deliver a sense of discovery or incentive to replay these games. You do still get traditional bosses, with some caveats. There are some memorable standouts, like the plant boss in 3 and, um... Yeah... Actually, maybe just the one standout. 
There's an incredible over-reliance of being chased by something you have to shoot in the head and stun before it can attack you. Not only have we been here and done this before, but with House of the Dead 4, the archetypes recycled multiple times within the same game. There's just a complete lack of creativity and an absolute downgrade compared to what had come before. The bonus epilogue campaign you can unlock in House of the Dead 4 even brings back the magician again. Oh, I almost forgot about this. Remember saving civilians in House of the Dead 1 and 2 to unlock new routes or be rewarded with extra health? Yeah, that's gone. In 3, you sometimes need to save G, which is more or less the same, but 4 just straight up has nothing of the sort. Of course, one of the biggest problems it would face is that there was no CRT anymore. Everything was on flat screen HD TVs, which meant that a traditional light gun just wouldn't work anymore. So, that leaves us with this thing. Oh boy. Where a light gun could kind of see the screen and be incredibly accurate, a PlayStation camera can only estimate the approximate position of a move controller. You soon realize you need the crosshairs that are constantly on screen because there you try and look down the actual sights of your actual gun, you'll notice where you're shooting is nowhere near where you're actually aiming. All of the calibration in the world won't help you. Not only that, the discrepancy gets worse over time as the aim drifts further and further out of sync. I quickly started relying on the on-screen indicator. I wasn't using the move as a gun anymore, it was a glorified wand or air mouse. I mean, it's fine, I guess, you get used to it, it's workable, it's better than using a standard controller, but it's still a world away from the perfection that was House of the Dead 2 on a CRT with the official Dreamcast gun. What wasn't fine was needing to close my curtains to play the game. See, the camera looks for the massive round colourful light at the end of the move, but there was so much natural light coming in through my window, the camera couldn't see my controller. Yes, too much sunlight. In the UK! In January! You can get tons of different gun casings for the move, but you'd think the official Sony one would be the most ergonomic and comfortable, right? Think again. In both games, you need to use the X button. It's reload in House of the Dead 3, and it throws grenades in 4. So, where is the X button? In a prominent, easy-to-get-to location? No! It's one of four tiny little buttons on the top of the gun! Wait, 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 if reload's not X in House of the Dead 4, then what is? Shaking the gun. Now, at first, this felt kind of cool, but my wrist soon started to disagree. Worse still, one of 4's gimmicks is shaking enemies and bosses off you, so you'll be doing this constantly as you play. Combine this with the bullet sponge of a final boss in 3, and I was actively swapping hands because it became physically uncomfortable to play towards the ends of each game. Finally, and I know this is just kind of petty and more rambling about the controller rather than the game itself, but the arcade version of House of the Dead 3 had badass shotgun controllers. They felt incredibly cool to hold and reload. There was a weight behind them, it added to the immersion. That's completely lost in the home version. And yeah, it's a completely unreasonable expectation to have such a bespoke peripheral for just one game, but... ah. Okay, let's just calm down and let's get back on track here. So, visuals. Visually, newer hardware, of course, gives these games an upgrade over their predecessors. Four more so than three, as you'd expect. Both games output at 720p, which is sadly par for the course with many PlayStation 3 releases. Still, that's an upgrade over House of the Dead 3's Wii release, and I'd imagine the Xbox release was also just standard definition. House of the Dead 3 is presented in its original 4-3 aspect ratio. No changes have been made under the hood to modernize that. House of the Dead 4, meanwhile, is 16 by 9. It makes playing the two back-to-back -back on the same console kind of jarring, and I'd imagine it's made for a slightly uneasy viewing experience in this video. Sorry about that. It's not to say 3 doesn't pull its weight or have some nice features, though. Your shotgun's always in the bottom corner and moves around as you aim. It helps put you into the game world, it's a really nice touch, and it didn't need to be there. I certainly noticed, though, when 4 walked that back, and I immediately missed it. 
On a technical level, force an objective improvement over everything that had come before it. Higher polygon counts on 3D models, higher resolution texture maps. It feels like it belongs in HD, rather than being an older game that's being upscaled. Aesthetically though, everything looks a little slick or shiny for my taste. Did the undead bathe in a giant vat of oils before the start of the game or something? Let's be fair, both games are relatively inoffensive to look at. For their times, the presentation is competent. Hell, I let the visuals in the Saturn port of the first game have a free pass. I certainly can't complain about these entries. And I think that's been a common theme today, complaining. I want to stress these aren't bad games. I had plenty of fun with them. They're faithful recreations of their arcade counterparts and a joyful short-lived distraction. But that's all they are. I can't help but compare it to the feature-rich home release of House of the Dead 2 and be left wanting. Normally I would say for the price that House of the Dead 3 and 4 actually go for on PSN, it's worth picking up. However, this is kind of a barrier to entry. See, at the time I bought a move controller in the gun handle, the PlayStation VR wasn't a thing, and the move was considered pretty much useless and worthless. So I could pick this up for you know, like £2 for the move controller, and I think it was about another £2 for the gun casing. But now that PlayStation VR is a thing that heavily relies on this controller, oh boy, the price just went right up. So at current market prices, I'd say, honestly, you're probably better off getting free over on the Wii, where it's packaged in with the second game, and probably just skipping four altogether. There's one more House of the Dead game on home consoles. Well, unless Scarlet Dawn ever gets support at some point. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Sega. That game is Overkill. It was made for the Wii and later ported to the PS3. I haven't played it before. I do have a copy, and I hear it's got a very different tone. Before I cover that, I might talk about some other games. For example, I'm playing Dragon Ball Z Kakarot right now. I'm admittedly avoiding committing to a schedule or lineup. Let's keep this fun and impulsive for now. Yeah, that's what she said. If you're curious which game I'll discuss next, the best way to find out is to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you soon.